There are probably two kinds of people in this hall right now. One, who share motivational quotes on Facebook all the time. And two, who get annoyed at the first group of people for doing so. I am part of the first group. Farzan Ahmed Khan, ladies and gentlemen, it's really nice to see you all here today. And I have a quote for you. I have a quote for you today. You cannot ignore this. You cannot scroll past this. You cannot see my message. You, uh, but please do not take this as a challenge and leave the hall. <laughs> the quote that I have for you today is, why do we fall? So we can learn to pick ourselves up. This is from the first movie of the Nolan trilogy called Batman Begins. It comes at a very important point in the movie, at a point where Batman is completely outsmarted by the movie's villain, ambushed in his own home, and he thinks he has lost, thinks he's failing. And these are the words that his, uh, his caretaker, his butler, Alfred, says to him at that time. Why is this quote so important? Why is this quote so important to a big fan of one of the most iconic and badass superheroes? Maybe because in this moment, I was able to see the same superhero in a moment of vulnerability. In a moment where he needed to be told that it's okay. An old man with no superpowers came up with arguably the strongest point of the movie by normalizing failure for Batman. He told him that it's okay, it's part of the process. Even though it might feel like the end, it's not. And that he can recover from this. And I'm going to recover from this. <laughs> but what did I take away from all of this? All that I just said and more. But let me give you some context first. What was one to say that standing on a stage wearing a suit, holding a mic? Let me give you some context. Let me take you on a journey. Let me set the stage. But before I get carried away, I had a very tough time at the start of the second year uh, of college. I had failed 10 of the 18 credits that I needed for my major. It was your run of the mill science course. Met 9 a.m. every day. Had God knows how many labs, recitations, assignments. Uh, intervals, lab reports, and now at this point I'm just saying words to make it sound much worse than it actually was, but I have to justify being here. <laughs> in, in all seriousness though, all that course needed was discipline. And I didn't have a lot of that as a first year at that time. I was trying to do too much while setting very high standards for myself. I had somehow ingrained in my head the idea that I have to succeed at everything to be a successful college student. I have to play football, go gymming, have an active social life, uh, run a student group, and at the same time, be amazing at academics. And like this, I set myself up to fail. So when I did fail those 10 credits, I took it really, really hard. In my head, I was ashamed. I was embarrassed in front of the people who, even though had struggled with me at some points in that course, had made it through when it mattered the most. I didn't. I was ashamed in front of my family who I thought I had let down. I started shying away from family Skype sessions. I started shying away from social gatherings, meeting with friends, because in my mind, I had that impending fear that the next topic of discussion could be me. Somehow the conversation could lead there. It all got much worse. It got to the point where I started rescheduling meetings last minute. So if at that time I rescheduled a meeting, th this is why. <laughs> Don't believe that excuse. Uh, I started rescheduling meetings last minute, getting out of social gatherings with my closest friends. And day after day, gathering after gathering, meeting after meeting, it all got to a point where I started with struggling to get out of bed every day. In moments like these, in moments like these, you need something drastic. You need something major that makes you take the decision. Makes you take the decision to break the habit, which in my opinion is much more difficult than actually breaking it. And for me, it was Alfred telling Batman that it's okay. See, my biggest problem at that time wasn't that I had failed. It was that I was struggling with accepting the fact that I had failed in order to move on from it. And not only did this quote help me do that, it gave me a launching pad. I started drawing parallels. Case one, Batman failed. Case two, I failed. <laughs> Case one, Batman succeeded after failing. Hmm, on to something here. <laughs> Case two, maybe I can too. 
it was a very hopeful thought at an otherwise hopeless time. And that's what I kept telling myself. It's okay and things can get better. It's okay and things can get better. These are two of the three mis puzzle pieces that I use to deal with failure. What's the third? Sometimes you do what you have to do. It's no escape route, no second option, no getting out of it. Sometimes you do what you have to do. One of the most impactful storylines for me is a struggling, panicky Iron Man. For those who are not familiar with Iron Man's character, first of all, I feel sorry for you. <laughs> I'm missing out big time. Uh, secondly, he's supposed to be a very charismatic, smooth, charming individual. He actually uses the words genius, billionaire, playboy, philanthropist to describe himself. And I have used that dialogue many times, shamelessly. <laughs> Uh, but imagine someone who's supposed to be all of that, goes through something, and then struggles with everyday tasks. How, what does he do? Well, he struggles, he panics, he accepts the fact that he's struggling, continues to strive for what he has to do, doesn't stray from his path. Imagine a superhero movie in which the superhero asks for rescheduling of fights, doesn't show up to the final confrontation. I don't want to watch that movie. Even if Vic takes me, I don't want to watch that movie. <laughs> I want to watch the movie in which the superhero takes the fight to the villain despite his struggles. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that we minimize our feelings. I'm not saying that we underplay our struggles. I'm not saying that we ignore our difficulties. No, not at all. I'm saying that we accept them, acknowledge them, and try to do what we have to do despite them. A very interesting thing happened the other day. I had to give an intermediate presentation for my senior year design project. And I'm not gonna talk about either the project or the, or the presentation, nothing interesting about that whatsoever. <laughs> I want to talk about the build-up, the build-up to it. I was part of the 10th group to present, and during the first nine presentations, I kept getting anxious, kept getting nervous. My first reaction, I was questioning myself, why am I getting anxious? It's a low-stakes presentation, uh, it's in front of people that I know, nothing new about that. And it's not even the final thing, it's an intermediate presentation. So nothing big, why am I getting anxious? And while I was being very successfully condescending to myself, I was trying to brainstorm the ideal excuse to get out of there. Medical, logistical, anything that would help me escape the situation. And uh, during that brainstorming session, which wasn't going that well, by the way, a friend recommended I use diarrhea as an option. <laughs> I doubt it would have worked. Regardless, uh, while I was brainstorming all of these excuses, I realized what I was doing wrong. I had somehow opened myself up to the possibility that the, the option to get out of there was one that was viable. And when I realized that, first thing I did, I closed that possibility. Second thing I did that it led me to was to accept the way that I was feeling without looking for any justifications or reasoning of any kind. Third step, focus on the presentation. Focus on what I'm going to say, how I'm going to say it, and get done with it. And I did. Don't know how it went. I guess I'll find out in a few weeks, but I went through with it. I did it because I realized finally that I had to do it. Iron Man did it because he knew from the start that he had to do it. If I look back at my time before coming to college, my culture and my family values had a significant effect in shaping the way I view failure. Failure was something that was dreaded back home. You would be embarrassed, insulted, often by your own family. It was their way of knocking some sense into you. But that embarrassment, that insult, that shame became part of the norm, became part of your automatic response to failure. And even though I left my country behind, I left my culture behind to come here, I brought those negative practices with me. To NYU Abu Dhabi, one of the most competitive liberal arts institutions out there. And interestingly enough, even though failure, even though I came here and failure was something that became more feared because the stakes had finally risen. But at the same time, it became more common. And that combined with my negative ways of thinking, it ended up setting, it ended up me in a situation that I was struggling every day. 
And in situations like these, you need a nudge, you need a push, something that will get you to make the decision that you have to break the status quo, you have to change the flow of situations. And at this point, watching my favorite superheroes in moments of vulnerability, in moments of failure, that is what did it for me. This it might not be the same thing for you. You might need something else. But I really hope there is something or someone or ideally yourself that is there to tell you that it's OK to fail. That even though right now it might feel like in an overwhelming fashion that things will not go your way, but there will come a point where things will start to fall into place. And until you get to that point, just keep doing what you have to do. Thank you.